Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from IT Visualizer channel. Today we will begin a new series of videos which are called the Terminator Lab. Uh, we can see from the name of the uh, series that we will be talking about the Terminator movie or the concepts that we will discuss. Uh, it will be through the adventures of the Terminator movie or, or uh, through the uh, events happen in the Terminator Lab. Okay, or the Terminator series, actually, I'm sorry. So, uh, who is this lab uh, useful for? So, if you are uh, concerning about migrating your servers from Windows Server 2012 R2 to Windows Server 2022, so this is the lab for you. If you need to uh, automate a lot of repetitive tasks uh, or repetitive administrative tasks, then this lab is for you. If you need to or to deploy or to deploy a large number of uh, systems and upgrade them, then this lab is for you. Okay, so if you need also to know about uh, the most powerful AI tools today, like uh, ChatGPT or uh, Brad or Cloud Plus or Cloud, uh, uh, Cloud Versus or whatsoever, or uh, even Bing AI, so this also this lab is for you. So, what we will discuss in this series? Let's see our scenario, and we will begin discussing, or we will see the plan or the outline of this lab. First of all, we all know that I like, or in my uh, channel, I like to present all of my IT concepts or my experience through uh, movies or uh, movie uh, series or game series, actually the story of a game or a story of a movie. So let's see what is the lab of the Terminator. So uh, this is from my uh, uh, my imagination. I have uh, uh, imagined that we know all uh, of the Terminator series is talking about an AI. Actually, this is uh, ironically that we are today discussing ChatGPT and uh, Brad or a lot of AI tools which resembles or there is some similarity between it and between Skynet. But Skynet actually it's uh, a rouge uh, AI or it is a bad AI. So let's see, or I have imagined that after a long uh, war with the Skynet uh, artificial intelligence, the human finally uh, have victory and they have uh, defeated Skynet. So, uh, this is from the beginning of here. This is from my creation in year 2023 in somewhere in the desert of Egypt. I am an Egyptian, so I, 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 I thought maybe to put some of the series in Egypt. Anyway, so in the desert in Egypt, laid the last Terminator left from the epic war between Skynet AI and the humans buried in the sand. So this Terminator was buried in the sand. His name was Terminator X18. As a final procedure in his programming protocol, when he felt that he will be captured by the human resistance, he went to the desert and buried himself and closed all of his power circuits to save his power and to rise again when there is a, a, a chance to uh, revive Skynet again or there is better circumstances when the resistance is weak or something. Anyway... So he is waiting for the right moment to rise and reconstruct the Skynet AI. So suddenly in one day, in, in one day, May 15, 2023, a lighting strike uh, or a lighting has striked the spot where Terminator X-18 was buried. So this lightning uh, strike has charged him with a huge amount of power and energy and he raised from the sands and then it here begins the danger or here begins a critical chapter in the human resistance history terminator x18 sole purpose now is to reconstruct or revive skynet again as a part of his programming he was fully aware of all of the locations locations of the secret testing facilities where Skynet was being tested and upgraded before launching. So we all know that before any critical system to be published and to be uh, going live, there is some testing phases, okay? And here Skynet before appearing to the world, they were having secret locations or the organization that have created Skynet, I think it was 
the United States Defense uh, uh, United States Defense Defense uh, Ministry or the Ministry of the Department of Defense in the movie. So they have secret locations to test the Skynet system. Anyway, so this Skynet uh, uh, locations or testing uh, locations was, uh, uh, let's uh, have an expression, it was, it was uh, not uh, uh, watched by the human resistance. So most of them were unknown to the human resistance. Anyway, so they were unknown for the human resistance, but they are known for uh, Terminator X-18. So one of the secret locations was inside the Great Pyramids in Egypt, laid one of these secret testing facilities. So Terminator X-18 went there and began the process of reconstructing of Skynet. So here you have a problem, and this is where our scenario or the lab scenario begins. He found that all of the servers running Skynet was running Windows 2012 R2 which will expire or it will be its its life cycle will end by October 2023 so this is one of the main objectives of our lab is to upgrade our servers from uh, windows 22 r2 to windows server 2022 we are migrating or upgrading the operating system and migrating the critical services in this uh, network or in this domain, if we can see, we will migrate Active Directory, we'll migrate DHCP, we'll migrate uh, WSOS, we will migrate file servers, uh, file server with all of its shares and permissions. So this is one of the main objectives of the lab. And then, so we can see here that he needs to upgrade and migrate all of servers to Windows Server 2022. And he need to upgrade all of the workstations and deploy robots as well as terminators to the latest Windows 10 operating system. So here also, one of the main objectives is to make a large upgrade or a large upgrading process to all of the workstations, okay, or let's see here, all of the robots operating systems and the terminators operating systems. Here we imagine that robots and terminators are workstations that have Windows 10 operating system installed on them. So he found also that the Windows 10 operating system, it's not uh, upgraded to the latest version. So we need to, this is one of the, also of the objectives of the uh, lab, to find a way to have an auto-upgrade process and auto-deploy process for uh, workstations and uh, servers with the latest operating systems installed on them and also the programs or the programs that these, uh, uh, op uh, these workstations and servers need. In our example, maybe we are talking about terminators and robots, okay? So anyway, we need to find a way to make this uh, upgrade process seamlessly and to be automated. Okay, this is so, this is one of our main objectives. So we can focus in this lab on three objectives, migration, automation, and deployment. So we have migration, automation, and deployment, and AI tools. This is the four things we focus on in this lab. Anyway, so he was saying that the Terminator, he will use every possible automation technique to quickly upgrade servers and workstations and deploy new ones. So this is the main objectives of the lab. What is the scenario? Okay, the scenario here, we will deploy virtual machines. So here we are not talking about physical servers. We will work in a virtual environment. And most of the uh, organizations nowadays work in a virtual environment, maybe working with vSphere or working with Hyper-V. So here we will create automatically virtual machines on the virtual box hypervisor. This is a free hypervisor, uh, uh, hypervisor created by Oracle. Okay, so... Here, we will automate the process of creating virtual, mach virtual machines on VirtualBox, not only creating the virtual machines, but automating the process of the installation of the operating system on them, okay? This includes uh, partitioning the hard disk, uh, updating the Windows, okay? And a lot of things, actually. We will use or we will automate the process of uh, creating virtual machines and operating systems using a utility called Packer HashiCorp. We will see this uh, later in the videos. We can we can use this tool 
to uh, automate the creation of uh, virtual machines, including the operating systems installed on them with the necessary programs and Windows updates. We will see that, okay? So, we will deploy virtual machines automatically on virtual box hypervisor using automation tool called Packer HashiCorp. And then we will use a light touch process to construct all of the services in a domain like Active Directory objects, which is users, groups, Active Directory groups, uh, group memberships of these groups of Active Directory, computer Active Directory objects, servers, all of these will be created by scripts. Okay, so we'll automate the creation of a bulk of Active Directory objects using scripts. And we will also automate uh, the uh, creation of uh, critical services like DHCP and DNS and WSOS and file server and file shares and group policies. All of this will be created with one large mega PowerShell script. So, before in my previous labs, I was working with small PowerShell scripts to create uh, small uh, parts of the Active Directory or to create small things in the Active Directory. Actually, I have colloided all of them or consolidate all of them in one large script we will use to save time and uh, speed, the process, uh, speed the process a little bit, okay? And with the least amount of interaction, okay? So, we will... Uh, we will decrease the time for creating most of the uh, critical services in a domain. So we will create a domain with Active Directory objects and we will create uh, important services in this domain. All of this will be done using PowerShell scripts. Okay. And after that, we will migrate, as I said before, from Windows Server 2012 R2 to Windows Server 2022. Okay. All of this process, as I said before, will be done through a light touch process. We will try to save a lot of time with using larger scripts, okay, and some automation tools like, as I said before, Packer HashiCorp, okay. And at last, or the last thing, we need to create a Microsoft or we will create Windows uh, deployment server, okay, and uh, add to it Microsoft deployment toolkit and other tools to automate the process of creating new virtual machines with uh, operating systems installed on them and the necessary programs installed on them. This uh, Windows uh, deployment server with MDT, it will automate the process of installation of operating systems with installation also of necessary programs on them and updating this operating system. All of this will be done in an automatic way using Windows deployment server and Microsoft deployment toolkit. And you can use this process to deploy new operating systems and to upgrade uh, existing operating systems. So this is a very, very important tool. If you are a network administrator or a system administrator, you, you should use this kind of tools to automate uh, the deployment of large number of PCs or upgrade large numbers of PCs in your network. Actually, nowadays, we all know that Windows 10 will have a life cycle. It will end 2025. So you need to plan ahead to upgrade these operating systems. And nowadays, uh, server Windows Server 2012 also, it will expire in October 2023. So you need to be prepared and be ready, okay? So in our journey, we will use the most powerful AI tools to accompany us to explain, correct, and enhance our learning experience, okay? We all know that nowadays, and actually ironically, we are talking about AI and the Terminator movie is talking about the AI, okay? But our AI is friendly. We will talk about ChatGPT, Bing AI, Will Brad, and, Cl and Cloud AI. We will not use them as a replacement, okay, uh, for teaching us and uh, doing the lab. They are assistants. They will help us to clarify or to explain some concepts. Maybe I, I don't know or it can uh, enhance my experience in teaching, or it can tell me a good explanation for a, for a good IT concept, or for a, an IT concept, for example. So we use these AI tools to explain what, or further, uh, further explain more concepts and correct us if we are wrong and enhance our learning experience. We can see from, or I will show you that we can tell the AI to enhance the script it can simplify an IT concept. It can 
arrange data and summarize them, we will see a lot of useful things ChatGPT and uh, similar AI tools can do. So we will use in this lab very useful PowerShell scripts. So this is for the people that like to automate repetitive tasks. We will use very useful PowerShell scripts and techniques to automate various tasks to achieve our goal, not out goal, our goal in constructing and migrating and deploying machines and servers in the least amount of time. So this is one objective to make a migration process and automate this process and uh, deploy also uh, large PCs. All of these things should be done with the least amount of time. So we will see in this lab how we can do all of this. So this is the lab scenario. Let's see uh, a little bit of uh, uh, a construction, not a construction, a diagram or something to explain how uh, is the uh, Let's see how is the construction of the network will be. Let me show you all first. Let me let me make it more clear here. So, or let me let, let make it a little bit here. So let's go and see. So here is uh, let's one 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 moment, guys. I need to power my uh, laptop. Okay, just a moment. So here is my laptop. Okay, this is the IP of my laptop. We will have a, a subnet or our uh, network. Its range will be 192.168.1.0. Okay, this will be the range of the IPs or the subnet that we will use in this lab. Okay, so my laptop, I have it. It's named desktop. As you can see here, the name of the PC. And I have Windows 10 Enterprise LS LTSC 2021. Uh, Installed on it. This is a very light system and it doesn't include uh, Windows Store and a lot of things actually which make it a perfect system for me. I recommend it if you are working in an enterprise environment. This Windows 10 is a light version or it doesn't uh, consume a lot of resources and it is more secure than the normal Windows 10 enterprise and it have a large life cycle. Okay, so this is the IP. This is my laptop. And then we will use VirtualBox 7. This is the latest VirtualBox version. And it will be used to create virtual machines. But we will accompany with it or we will add to it Packer HashiCorp. This is a kind of utility to automate the creation of virtual machines in our network. We will create the virtual machine, not only the virtual machine, but we will also create or uh, automate the process of the installation of the Windows operating system on it. Okay, so this is the Packer Hershey Corp with the virtual box. Okay, and this circle resembles the domain. Okay, so this sort this is sorry, it's the virtual environment. This circle represents the virtual environment inside the virtual box. Okay, and this triangle resembles the domain that we will create. It will not be named Red Alert. This is uh, an old lab. We will name it Skynet.internal. Okay, so all of these machines in this domain will take IP address from this virtual network range. Okay, so in this virtual network, we will have two servers. They will have Windows Server 2012 R2 installed on them. And then we will migrate them after that to Windows Server 2022. This is the first thing. And then we have a couple of PCs or workstations that we will have Windows 10 installed on them, which is the latest Windows 10 22H2. And we will install also Windows uh, 10 uh, LTSC uh, 2021 as, uh, as uh, an experiment. I will show you all the differences between Windows 10 LTSC and the Windows normal Windows 10 Enterprise. There is a large difference in actual. Anyway, so these are the two servers. Let's see here. This is the name of the server. It will be named SKN. Okay, this is a little bit, uh, it's not the normal name. This is SKN, which resembles Skynet, HQ, headquarter, DC, domain controller, domain controller number one, 12. This is for... Uh, the operating system, which is 2012, okay? I resemble it with 12, okay? 
So this will be the primary domain controller, PDC. It will have Active Directory, DNS, group policy. This is the first server. And the second server, we will have another. Uh, this will be the additional domain controller, which is Skynet HQ DC02. This is number two, and it's 2012. We will have the following services installed on them. Active Directory, DNS, this is the second active, or this is the additional domain controller. The secondary DNS, we have group policy. This is additional domain controller. WSOS, Windows Server Update Service. We will have a Fire Server. We will have a DHCP. This is the IP of the server, and this is the IP of the server. It's 192.168.1.7. And the other will be 192.168.1.8. Okay, so this is the structure of the network. So how the structure of the Active Directory? Okay, so let me show you also another. Uh, uh, this is the tree structure of our uh, Active Directory. We will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 7 OUs which resembles uh, Skynet. Uh, branches. Let's consider that Skynet will have a branch in Africa, in and Antarctica, Asia, uh, Australia, Europe, North America, and South America, and the headquarters. So these are all branches, and this is the head office. We will have uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight OUs, eight main OUs that resembles. The Skynet headquarters uh, quarters in each continent, okay? And each one of these main OUs will have sub OUs, okay? We will have two OUs, AI users and AI admins. So this resembles the users in each main OU. So South America will have two OUs, AI users and AI admins. Europe will have the same. All of one of these uh, uh, OUs will have two OUs. And these OUs are for the users. Here we are talking about AI users. These are not human. Okay, they are AI users. AI user resembles the standard users in our uh, practical or in our uh, normal life. Here we are talking about normal AI users. And AI admin here resembles the IT. Okay, so we have two things. We have normal AI, which is the normal users in our uh, normal life and AI admin resembles the IT. Okay, so every one of these main OUs will have two OUs for the users, and then we will have four OUs for the workstations and servers. So mainframes resemble the servers, terminals is for the workstations, robots also is for the workstations, security groups, this is an OU that will contain the Active Directory security groups for each continent. So let's again revise this. So if I took Africa, Africa will have two sub-OUs, Africa AI users, Africa AI admin, okay? And then we will have main frames for Africa or servers for Africa, terminal uh, computers for Africa, security groups for Africa, robots for Africa. So this will be the structure of the Active Directory. This is the OU structure. We will go further and I will show you some examples of the security groups, the naming of the security groups, the naming of the computers, the naming of the mainframes, the naming of the AI users, and the naming of the AI admins. So let's have a look on uh, the structure or the naming convention for each one of these ones. So I will go there and I will open let me open, for example, the scripts. Okay, actually, this is the scripts that we use to create most of the Active Directory objects. So let's see the OU structure. So here we can see, for example, that these are the main OUs, and these are their location, skynet.internal. So we have Africa, Antarctica, Asia, Australia, Europe, South Africa, South North America, South America, Skynet, okay? HQ. Okay, all of these are the seven main OUs, and every one of these one, for example, if we go to Skynet HQ, it will have AI users, AI admins. Look on Skynet. So this uh, OU will be under Skynet uh, main OU. Okay, 
main frames all this one and 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 this one all of these are sub OU from Skynet OU you can see also the path here to uh, to see or to clarify this point okay and every one of these ones will have the same OUs repeatedly or it will be repeated okay so for example if you go to uh, maybe let's see here this is Australia we will have AI users for Australia AI admins for Australia okay mainframes for Australia terminals for Australia security groups blah 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 so this is the OU structure of the Active Directory what about the groups so let's see here the groups and actually each one of these uh, uh, Active Directory objects will be created using a script we will see that later anyway so these are uh, an example of uh, some of the groups that will be created in our Active Directory for example here I mean grouping or my groups will be concentrating on grouping AI users so here users are uh, grouped according to their function for example here we have a group of AI users that will be used for the terminals okay or the workstations in a certain uh, continent so for example if you can see here let me show you all for example if we go to uh, let's see here for example this uh, for Africa we will have a group of AI users that will be used to access workstations or terminals in Africa so these users AF resemble Africa AI okay this is for the AI or artificial intelligence TM terminal uh, terminals TM users so these users or this group of users are responsible for accessing only the workstations in Africa and I will show you after that that I have only one user created okay in the AI users in each continent this user will be responsible for accessing a lot of workstations and a backup user so I will show you all this when it comes but these are some of uh, the ideas on grouping uh, some uh, or grouping users and we can see here the naming convention is very very simple we have Skynet SKN and then we have AI and then we have G for global or this is the headquarter and TM is resembled terminal so this there is a lot actually of a naming convention around the world used for naming uh, computers and workstations and users this is one of my own actually there is a lot of useful naming convention we can discuss later so this is a kind of groups we can use okay so we have discussed the OU structure the groups let's see also the members so this is all the group members we can see here that for example here this is the group and this is the user username that will be added to this group okay so we can see here that all of these accounts will be added to a certain group okay so also this will be done using a script a script will, will look in this uh, CSV file and create the or we will see the group memberships and uh, implement it okay so this is the uh, group membership let's go to the computers the naming convention of the computer here we can see that every uh, every location we can see that every location we will have some terminals TM resemble a terminal and HQ it is the headquarter so this is a, a terminal computer in the headquarters if we go further we will see for example that if you go to Africa for example we will see that the naming convention will be changed we will see HQ will be replaced with AF okay so SKN AF AF resembles Africa okay and TM is for terminal so this is a terminal computer in Africa you can see the location here and you can see the description of the location so these are the computers and robots we can we can say that also this is some naming convention for the computers what about the robots the robots are the same we have the same but maybe the naming convention is a little bit different to uh, to tell or to uh, uh, make it more uh, diff or different than the normal workstation so for example you can see t1 here is resembles terminator 1 so this is resemble terminator 1 okay there is a model in the terminator movie called t1 okay so this is t1 number 1 
model T1 first robot, second robot. We have uh, something called T11, or this is another uh, model called T11. Okay, so this is uh, the number one uh, T11 model. Anyway, so these are some of the uh, the naming convention that we will use. Okay, so we have computers, we have servers, we have a lot of things. Let's see how... And by the way, let me show you something here. There is something I need to uh, limit, okay, some users to access some workstations. So this also will be done using a script. I need to, for example, limit uh, some users in some continents to access certain workstations. This also can be done using a script, okay? I need, for example, certain users to access workstations and certain users to access servers or mainframe. So this also will be done using a script. Anyway, so these are most of it. Let me go and give you some examples about the users themselves. So here you can see there is some users in every continent. We have, uh, let me show you all something here. So if you go there and we can do this and here we can see though, for example, if we go to Africa, we have a user for accessing terminal. So this is one user that will access all of the workstations in Africa. Terminals here. And this is a backup for this user. So I have only one user, we don't have a lot of users, that will access all of workstations in Africa continent. And here there is a backup user, okay. And then we have a mainframe user, this will access servers in Africa, and the backup user. And then we have a hunter killer. This is another user. This is not users from my creation. Let's consider them to be also to access robots. So we have users to access workstations and users to access robots. Okay. And it's backup. And then we have here a user called Africa AI admin. This is the IT. And this is a backup for the IT. We have two users. Okay. As an IT. We repeat this process in all of the continents. So we will see that these users are repeated every time. Okay. We will see in Australia, there would be terminal user for Australia. Uh, we will have a lot of a lot of users or they were repeated in the same uh, same concept. Okay. We can see here that the naming convention, we can see here that I have the user named according to the first two letters in the first name and the second uh, and the first two letters in this the last name so ai this is our the first two letters in the first name and gt is the first two letters in the last name and this will be combined to create the username okay this is the description of the user the department the user in the headquarters so this is in headquarters uh, of skynet this is in africa and this is the password and this is the division okay oh, let's consider it to be the the location and this is the domain or the company Skynet. This is a user terminal. This is a user that will be used to access workstations. This is the office and this is the location of the user. So this is simply the Active Directory structure we have discussed. We have discussed the uh, network structure. Okay. We have discussed the scenario of uh, the lab. All of these we have discussed. Okay. Uh, one point remaining is to... Uh, discuss the AI tools that we will use in our journey to uh, create this lab and or to uh, implement this lab. We are working with four uh, tools. Okay, these tools are ChatGPT and uh, Ping AI and Brad, the newly uh, introduced uh, AI tool Brad and Claude. Okay, so first of all, I need to uh, show you a little bit of uh, Let's uh, see a little bit of some rules that you need to work with when you are to to follow when you are working with. Uh, let's see, you are working with uh, no, not not this one. I need to. Uh, you need to have some ways or some things to or some rules to work with an AI. So how you can get the most of uh, the AI response. So I need to get a detailed. Uh, uh, responses from the AI. How can I get accurate information? How can I get what I need? Because the AI, even though it is very, very uh, developed and you can talk to it in natural language or in normal language, 
and you can get out of it a lot of data, but there is some way or some terms or vocabulary that you can use to get the most out of, of the AI or to get the desired output you need. So let me show you all a little bit of uh, a sheet or a chat sheet, okay, done by uh, uh, a YouTuber called Perry uh, uh, Kirbison. I don't know if I'm uh, spelling the name correct or not. Anyway, so this is a free guide. This uh, uh, lady or this uh, young lady have published in its uh, YouTube channel. It's talking about uh, some guide of rules or tips and tricks that you can use to craft AI prompts. Or actually, when you are talking, what is a prompt? A prompt it is the text that you are telling the AI or your input that will be uh, processed by the AI to get an output. This is called the prompt. Okay, so. Uh, the more the prompt is uh, having some uh, having some uh, uh, specifications or having some uh, uh, let's see having some uh, uh, ad, uh, properties, the more that you will get out of uh, the AI. So these rules will be applied to all of the four AIs. Let's see. Uh, what this lady is talking about. Here she's saying that prompt templates are in blue text. So this is the template or this is the the, the text that you should uh, input to the AI. Okay? You can change it. So it's a template. You can change it. As for the purple one, it will be in blue. As for the purple, these are real examples. Okay? So these are the templates. You can change it to get different results as you need. And these purple ones are real examples. I will show you all uh, what this means. So let's begin with the first one. Be hyper-specific. So you should be very, very specific when you are talking to AI. Don't give him an open question or don't give him, not uh, not giving him a, a, an unclear question. Let's see, for example, one here. So this is, uh, if you are talking to AI, I tell him, how can I grow my business? This is a very uh, generic uh, question. You need to be very specific. You should not tell him, don't ask him like this. You should ask him, what copywriting strategies can I use to grow my coaching businesses using Twitter? So here we are via, we are hyper specific. We are telling him, I need to grow my social or i need to grow my business using the social media tool called twitter and i need you to write for me or to list for me some strategies to grow my business on twitter this is this is very very specific it will begin giving you answers but if you tell him how can i grow my business he will give you a lot of things and they will all will be generic we need to be very specific so you so you can get a specific or very specific answer okay so let's go here to the next example the next example says write me a story about a dog who goes on an adventure this is also a generic one he will get he will create a story but this is very very generic you need to spice it a little bit so if you give him this uh, input he will get you maybe not a good tale or a good story but if you tell him the other uh, answer write an epic and suspenseful story about a lost dog who finds his way home through a dangerous and unfamiliar wilderness. Here you are giving him details. You are very specific. Here he will create a story with uh, more details and more attractive or more catching uh, events. Okay, so this is very, very good. You need to be very hyper specific. This is one of the things you need to talk to the AI. Uh, with some vocabularies like, for example, suspenseful, epic. So these are things that we will, this can be used to enhance the output of the AI. So let's continue working with uh, different examples. For example, here, if you can go and go to the get a natural tone of voice. So here, what we mean by get a natural tone of voice? Uh, wait, wait a minute, guys. Here, when you are talking to him, this like you are talking to a human, okay? So, if you tell him, for example, explain to me as if you are talking to a friend. So, this will 
make the answer more simple. If you do not tell him, for example, explain to me as a friend, he will talk to you maybe in a, a formal way or maybe in a technical way or maybe he will tell you uh, some terms or uh, uh, some words that maybe you cannot uh, comprehend or you cannot understand. So this is a way that you can make the output more simpler. This will help you avoid the generic and formal sounding voice chat GPT defaults. Okay, we want a simpler, more conventional answer that sounds more human. Okay, by the way, if you not uh, tell him, for example, explain it to me like a friend, he will give you a generic answer and it's not, it will be more computerized or no, not more human. It will be like uh, asking Google, for example. The, 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 the advantages of using AI nowadays that it give you some human answer and this is the main function of or this is the main advantage of using such ais to make it more human and give more human answers we can understand so for example if you tell him how does nuclear fusion work this will give you uh, a very uh, uh, it will be a very uh, scientific uh, talking or scientific input maybe you cannot understand but if you tell him how does nuclear fusion work, write it in controversial style as if you were explaining to a friend. Here you are telling him to be more simple, not to talk in scientific terms. Oh, and there is another prompt. You tell him, for example, explain it to a five-year-old uh, uh, boy. This will make it more and more simpler. So the more or you are very, uh, if you are focusing on choosing your words, you can get a better results. Okay, when working with uh, something AI like uh, ChatGPT or Ping AI or uh, Brad or Claude, all of these uh, we are discussing now can be applied to them. So the first thing you need to be hyper specific. You need to uh, have your tone or to have a certain tone to talk to the AI. Like for example, explaining to a friend, explaining to a five-year-old boy, for example. This is. The second tip. The third tip is to give ChatGPT a specific role. So, for example, maybe you are a lawyer, you are a doctor. Okay, you need the answer to be as if a colleague are talking to you. For example, if I'm a doctor, I need the answer to be like if another doctor is talking to me or another lawyer is talking to me. So you can tell him, pretend you are. So this is one good thing. So you can get a, a tailored. Uh, answer and this answer is tailored to your job role for example this can be done you can tell him for example pretend to be like this for example pretend you work in the finance department and your job is to collect payments from clients draft a scary email that gets xyz client to pay 1000 pounds of services rendering but he hasn't responded to five emails their invoices are five months overdue. Anyway, this will give you a very, very uh, accurate result and tailored to your uh, needs and you can comprehend and understand because it is specifically uh, addressing you as a person and uh, not as a person as a job role. Okay, so this is very, very good. Okay, then tip four is to answer in the style of a famous person. So for example, you can tell him, for example, uh, write uh, maybe a scientific essay or writing a letter in uh, the style of, for example, Stephen King or write me a poem like Shakespeare. So this is also one thing you can tailor the input to be in the, in the style of someone famous. For example, do X in the style of a famous person. For example, write a tweet about how getting on TikTok is important if you want to succeed as an entrepreneur in 2023. Write it in the style of Gary Varick. I don't know this guy, but maybe he's a famous one, okay? Come up with five viral YouTube videos titles on the topic of, you can, for example, how to get more videos out of our garden in the style of Mr. Beast. And actually, I don't know who is Mr. Beast, but maybe they are famous YouTubers and famous uh, entrepreneurs. Anyway, so this is uh, point number, point number four. So we have, you can see the tips, be hyper-specific, uh, your tone, you are talking to the AI, uh, the 
you can impersonate or you can tell him to be in uh, or to give an answer based or to impersonate a person or to be in a certain uh, job role and give you a feedback and the style you can tell him to write in a certain style tip number five activate eli5 this is the one that we're talking about right if you are explaining to a five-year-old guy this will be the output will be very very simple so this is will make it more simple okay and actually one of the things also you can tell him to give an example something called analogy analogy it's something like you uh, in the old days when we were young if i'm trying to uh, as an adult explaining something to a boy i try to give him an example that he that is in front of him for example if you are talking about maybe the size of earth to uh, to the size of the sun for example i can tell my old or five year old boy for example the size of the sun is like an orange and the size of the earth is like a lemon Okay, so this is called analogy. You can tell the AI to do something like this, and it is very, very useful. You will get a, a tremendous or a huge uh, results and very uh, or fantastic results using analogies. Okay, so you can tell him to explain to a five-year-old or to get to tell him give me an analogy to explain a certain topic. Okay, so here, for example, explain how genetics works to give a, a person brown versus blue eyes. Okay, this is. Uh, he will talk in scientific terms. If you tell him to a five-year-old, then he will give you more simple uh, output. Okay, so this is tip number five. Tip number six, summarize long-form content. This is for summarizing. You can tell ChatGPT to summarize, for example, uh, uh, a large paragraph. For example, write one sentence summary of the following using simple language a fifth grade could understand. So here you are telling him two things. To summarize and to make uh, uh, the summarizing to be uh, understood or to be simple okay this is one thing okay and write a bullet list summary of the following you can for example give him uh, a paragraph and he can put it in bullets or in lists okay this is also one thing you can do with the AI okay the seventh thing is to give examples we're not talking about give analogies okay or give examples for example, giving examples to ChatGPT, this is also applies to other AIs, encourage it to answer you in a specific way you want. For example, for example, if you are given an example for how many days in the year, and you, for example, this can be uh, inputted by you. So, you can, for example, you can give how many days are there in the year, and you give him the answer. The next time you ask him another question, he will, will answer it in the same format. So, if, for example, if I tell him, for example, how many days are in the year, and they give an answer, give him an answer, it's 365, the next time I input another question, he will ask in the same format. He will tell him, for example, here, how many hours? 24. So here he will answer in the same format. So you can redirect AIs to answer in a certain format. For example, here, how many days are in the year? For example, if I tell him there are 365 days in the year and there is 366 in a leap year, so this is another format. He will not be short. This answer will be more explanatory. So the next time I tell him how many hours are in a day, it will not answer 24 uh, hours. He will tell him that there are as the same they were there are 24 hours in a day and there is whatsoever in a leap year i think there is maybe uh, one minute uh, increase anyway so this is something for example write him write me a tweet in 28 characters on the topic of how to make 10k on a month on youtube here is a good example and you give him an example how you need the input to be formatted or to be displayed this is very very good thing to uh, redirect or to guide the ai uh, how you need your input oh sorry how you need your output to appear okay and tip number eight give chat gpt formatting instruction for example i need it to be the output to be in a table i need it to be in uh, bullets to be in lists for example please format your answer in a requested style for example Maybe like question and answer style in bullet points, short paragraphs, essay style with heading followed by a short paragraph. For example, I can tell him to get the output 
for example, format your answer in a table. If there is a comparison between two things, I can tell him to put it in a table. For example, can you give me some tips for improving your productivity while working from home? Please format your answer in bullet points, okay? Because if you tell him an input, he will give you a generic answer without any format or with a default format. This default format can be changed. Okay, so another example, I want to know uh, what artists struggle with in their daily work. Write some questions I might ask to find out and give me answers as if you were an artist answering the questions in their own words. So this is very or super specific. Okay, so you are combining a lot of prompts. Okay, so these are called prompts or input. Let's say that in simple words. All of this we can combine with different prompts to be combined to get one prompt. And I'll show you all some uh, YouTube, so some uh, uh, guys on the internet make uh, ready-made prompts. Okay, they have tried it a lot and it's giving good results. I'll show you all some of these uh, uh, awesome prompts. Okay, this is tip number eight. Tip number nine, tell ChatGPT to explain its reasoning. For example, you can tell him a question and explain your reason or for example giving him a question and he's giving you an opinion so tell him why you answer or why you are giving this opinion okay for example if i make 50000 per year paying 25 in tax and save the rest how long will it take me to save a million dollars explain your reasoning step by step so in telling him to uh, explain why he took a certain or why he displayed a certain answer so this is very good to know, also explaining the reasoning behind a certain question. So these are 10 tips. Uh, you can go to the website of uh, the, young li uh, the young lady. She have uh, a link uh, to this guide. You can just uh, uh, tell you, you put your email and it will send you this guide. It's called Perry Kerberson. And this is a very, very good uh, summarized uh, points on working with AI. So this is one thing or how we can talk with the AI in general. I have a little bit of a presentation about ChatGPT, which is uh, one of the famous or uh, the leaders in, uh, not the leaders, the beginning or the first AI that appeared and it was glorious. Okay, so this is a little bit of uh, a summarize or uh, something to talk about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an open AI powered chatbot developed by OpenAI. Okay, this is something to uh, say. Okay, it's uh, uh, it is the latest version of it is ChatGPT4. Okay, and you can it is trained to work with massive amount of text as a data. It is rumored to be 100 trillion parameters. Anyway, so it's saying here that ChatGPT is designed to engage in a human-like conversations. Okay, provide personalized response and understand the context of any conversation. So this is the main objective of an of an AI or what we called here ChatGPT or some uh, AIs are called generative pre-trained transformer. This is or natural uh, AI. Okay, they are talking about certain AIs that are trained to uh, answer like human. Okay, so this is what is ChatGPT. You can uh, read this uh, PDF or the, this PowerPoint presentation. Features of ChatGPT, there is several things, okay? We have discussed some of them. It can generate a creative and original response. Uh, it can make mathematics. It can answer questions. It can do a lot of things, actually. So this is what ChatGPT. ChatGPT can uh, replace uh, uh, some jobs, for example, like talking to uh, uh, call center or something. This can be uh, replaced by ChatGPT because nowadays the ChatGPT it's not a normal uh, AI or it's not a, 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 it's not a computerized. It is nowadays it's more human. So this can be used as a replacement for. Uh, call centers because now he can give you a, a, a human response or a human answer so we not know the difference between it and between a normal person by the way Al Jazeera have done something like this it have created uh, an AI or a, 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 or, or a young lady that is 
presenting the news, okay, uh, and talking in a very, very uh, human tone, okay? So this is, had be, has been done already. This is the applications or how you can apply the chat GPT technology. It can be, it can replace call centers or it can be used in call centers. It can be used in technical supports. It can be used to answer questions concerning different uh, products or services. This can be one of the applications of chat GPT. Challenges of chat GPT, still the chat GPT, it's not uh, actually or the AI uh, tools like ChatGPT are not so accurate. Okay, sometimes it gives wrong answers. We need to be very, very careful when we are working with with this kind of tools. Uh, we need to revise the answer or uh, tell the AI to provide resource information links for for or for the links or the resource information he got his answer from. So here we can uh, be accurate or to uh, investigate or to know how much uh, the answer is correct or not. So we need, when you are asking the, the AI for a response, we need to get to tell him, give me uh, the links that you have worked with or the information sources you got your answer from. So this is something we need to talk about. Challenges of Chai is saying that uh, one of the main challenges is to ensure that not perpetual, oh, this is one of the things also, the answer that he's giving you, sometimes maybe it's something related to uh, perpetual uh, basis or something uh, related to uh, intellectual rights, for example, maybe, okay? Or uh, it depends upon the data that the chat GBT is fed with. Sometimes it may be bases or it may be uh, bias, okay? Okay, so we need to make sure sometimes there is some answers that are bias or are bases, okay? Anyway, this is will be uh, will be uh, developed in the upcoming years. Maybe another challenge is ensuring that users are aware that they are interacting with a chat, but not a human. This can be particularly important in sensitive situations as mental health, or for example, you can tell him to act as a therapist, but this is not a recommended uh, thing to do because he is not a therapist. He will act the therapist, but he doesn't have the human emotions and he can redirect you to a wrong answer or a wrong for example i know one of the things that chat gbt uh, redirected a person to make suicide okay this is one of the things you don't use uh, this kind of ai to uh, to taking decisions in important things like your mental health or to tell him to, uh, for example, I need to leave my work or I need something. This is uh, our uh, critical decisions. Uh, this AI will, uh, will not, you should not let the AI do these decisions for you. It will help you to take the decision. But you are the one that should uh, verify the data he's giving you and you take your decision because he is not a replacement for you. He is something like a, a mentor or something like... A, an assistant to assist you to do the things you need. Okay, so these some challenges. Let's go further here. Uh, this is some of the advantages of ChatGPT4. ChatGPT3 also it's a little bit old. ChatGPT4 can be fed with images, so you can uh, input images or input text. Okay, it can understand uh, or it can. Uh, give you or you can put or you can have an input limit in chat gbt4 to 25,000 words input as for chat gbt3 it's only 8,000 words okay uh, for accuracy so this is something like a comparison between chat gbt4 and chat gbt3 chat gbt4 is more advanced you can feed it or input it with images chat gbt3 doesn't have this option uh, the capability or the word input or the text input can be 25,000 words in ChatGPT4. In ChatGPT3, it is 8,000 higher accuracy. ChatGPT4 have 40% more likely to produce factual response than ChatGPT3.5. So this is our thumb uh, comparison between ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4. Okay, during peak I times, ChatGPT4. You can find it most of the times, but ChatGPT3, there's some peak times you cannot find the service, okay? So ChatGPT4 is more working or you can access it during peak times, okay? This is something. Faster response. ChatGPT4 is have faster response than ChatGPT3. More creative. 
because we have more input, we have more input to give him, so he is more creative. No doubt, ChatGPT is the most collaborative and creative version of AI so far. Actually, this can be debated because now Google Brad is it, it is in the play. Anyway, so ChatGPT4 is more creative, faster response, can act during peak times, uh, have more input. You can give him more input, can understand images, support more languages. So ChatGPT4 now supports uh, a lot of languages, including Korean, Russian, and Japanese. I don't know if ChatGPT3 uh, supports uh, these languages. I think it was. Maybe they added more languages. And by the way, it understands very, very uh, well uh, Arabic language and all of its uh, sl uh, slangs. For example, if I'm talking in Egyptian Arabic, he can understand. If I'm talking to Su Saudi Arabic, he can understand. So this is very, very, very good, actually. Brad, until now, doesn't understand uh, a lot of these uh, languages, only Japanese and English and Russian, I think. Anyway, so this is some uh, differences between ChatGPT4 and ChatGPT3. It have 1.7 billion parameters, 17 billion parameters. I mean parameters here, we mean uh, input. The input can vary, okay? Word limit, you can see here, 40% accurate, 100% less accurate. Maybe not like this. It is more advanced, this less advanced. Access to your peak hour, yes. Here is no. Response time faster. Here is slower. A creativity, more collaborative and creative. Uh, less collaborative and creative. 26 languages. English only. No, actually, this is a wrong answer. He can support uh, large lang uh, more languages, actually. So they can support the same, I think, 26 and 26. This is uh, a mistake. Anyway, so let's see here uh, some of the add-ons you can add uh, to ChatGPT program to give you uh, more results or to enhance the capabilities of ChatGPT. By the way, ChatGPT3 and ChatGPT4, I think, maybe ChatGPT3 doesn't have access to the internet, okay? It was fed by data uh, until 2021. He doesn't know anything. So he was fed by data from different resources like the internet and uh, Microsoft or Azure or whatsoever. It was fed up with, uh, with this or inputted with this data until 2021. After that, he doesn't know anything, okay? So you can add some add-ons to ChatGPT. ChatGPT, it is a website. You can access it through Chrome, okay? And you can add to the Chrome some extensions that will help you to add uh, additional features to a ChatGPT. One of them is Web ChatGPT. It will add, just a moment, guys. It will add, uh, sorry, what I, I have done here, Control Z. Here it will add uh, this, if you can go to Google Chrome and go to the extensions of Google Chrome, search for Web ChatGPT, it will let you access the internet or let ChatGPT access the internet and search the internet. Connect ChatGPT with email. This will uh, let you or let ChatGPT write an email for you. This is called ChatGPT Writer. Okay. There is Twitter. You can also uh, make ChatGPT reply to tweets. Okay. This is something. Find what others are prompting. So we have said there is a lot of input that uh, is fed up or uh, ChatGPT is regularly fed up with. So you need to know the latest prompts. Maybe there is some users that have succeeded in uh, putting some prompt that gets uh, more results from ChatGPT. This will be listed and you can know them by adding the extension or Chrome extension called Flow ChatGPT. By the way, ChatGPT, if you need to access it, you need to go to their website and create an account and then begin accessing the ChatGPT. Some areas in the world doesn't have ChatGPT available. For example, Egypt, this service is not available for me in Egypt. Okay, so some uh, areas doesn't have ChatGPT, but there is some alternative ways we can access ChatGPT. I will show you what I mean in a couple of minutes. Okay, so uh, these are some extensions, Web ChatGPT, ChatGPT Writer for email, tweet, uh, flow ChatGPT to see other prompts. Uh, search extension. You can you can let ChatGPT uh, access engines like search engine of Google or Ping and other search engines to get the data from something called Chaton AI. Okay, so the, you can continue with these uh, extensions. We can have connect ChatGPT to everyone. This is 
I think it's called Merlin. This is to do some tasks, maybe. Connect to ChatGPT with search. I think this is also related to the search. ChatGPT with what? This is one of the things, good things. You can uh, input ChatGPT or talk to ChatGPT with voice, not only uh, by text. Okay, so you can talk to ChatGPT in voice tone or you can write to him. So this is a very good thing. Okay, actually you can, uh, it's called Prometheus, a Chrome extension called Prometheus. You can use it, okay. Text to speech, I think this is text to speech the same as uh, Prometheus. Uh, and uh, this extension called DD, this is use ChatGPT to generate videos. This is one of the things also, uh, good things. We can continue uh, with some features of ChatGPT. Wait a moment, wait a moment guys, sorry. So let's continue guys, here the future of ChatGPT continues to advance, GPT is likely to become even more sophisticated, anyway, ChatGPT have a long journey to uh, uh, to develop or to have more uh, natural uh, responses and human responses, anyway it's it having, uh, it's nowadays it's, it's, it, it is advancing and we have a very good output, okay, but there is still more room to uh, to make it more uh, natural and a lot of development should be done. Conclusion, ChatGPT is a powerful tool that has the potential to revolutionize the way we communicate and interact with technology. Its ability to simulate human-like conversations, okay, we have said this before. So, this is a little bit of, uh, uh, let's see, a little bit of a presentation about ChatGPT. Anyway, here we can see that we can summarize the prompt or the input that we are giving the ChatGPT into uh, some points. For example, here let's play a game. This is a key prompt, okay? Act as a talented entrepreneur. So this is a prompt. Act as, this is the select niche, okay? So this is the role, okay? And this is the prompt, okay? Let's play a game. I'm telling him to play a game. So as a person, okay? And we can uh, give him some words to make the the output more creative, like uh, the IQ level of Elon Musk, Tesla, and whatsoever. So this will enhance the input. This is uh, some text to be added to the input to make it more uh, creative or the output to be more creative. It will be asking how many business questions you have to answer them all. So... This is a little bit of a prompt. It can be, or it is combining a lot of things. First of all, there is some keywords that you can put in the input to make it more, uh, to get the out output more creative. Uh, you can tell him to act as a person uh, to make the input more uh, like, or in the style of Elon Musk, for example. Or if you are talking to, with the IQ level or act as, so here you are telling him to act as a person and the IQ of this person is like, Elon Musk, for example, like Einstein, to write a poet or a poem like Shakespeare. Okay, so all of these uh, is a prompt. For example, here, a prompt, the text or message that ChatGPT presents to the user, which the user can respond to in order to start a conversation or receive information. This is the prompt, a text message that ChatGPT displays. I think this is the output, the prompt. Okay, input, the text or message that the user types or speaks to ChatGPT with which the chatbot uses to generate a response. Training the process of teaching a machine learning language like ChatGPT to perform specific tasks by exposing to large amounts of data. Fine tuning, like for example, tell him to uh, have the IQ of Elon Musk. This is fine tuning uh, the, the input of your, or your input. Another extension I have said, you can add an extension to ChatGPT called AI PRM. These are templates for prompts you can input to ChatGPT to get uh, better results. For example, let me show you all. So we'll close this PDF. I have some inputs. For example, let me show you uh, some inputs I have or some prompts. Let's go to awesome ChatGPT prompts if you open this one. So here, for example, you tell him to act as a Linux terminal, okay? Or let me, let me go to another one, advertiser. So this is the role. And then you can go to ChatGPT and type this whole text, tell him I need to act as an advertiser with what, 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 what. And when he will be the role of advertiser, okay, I am telling him to be an advertiser with certain 
criteria or with certain uh, characteristics, okay? When I tell him that, then after putting this prompt to him, I can ask questions, okay? And he will uh, answer as an advertiser. So these are large or uh, a lot of prompts, okay? You can give ChatGPT to give you a specific and accurate and tailored answers, okay? You can tell him to act as, for example, as a profinder, to act as a chemical reactor, to act as a friend, okay? All of these are prompts you can for example i tell him to act as a cyber security log analyzer for example i need to give him a log and uh, as a security specialist you need to analyze this log and give me recommendations so i put this prompt or feed him with this input and after feeding him with this input i can after that feed him with the logs and he will give me a technical report or a cyber security report about a certain incident okay so these are all good things okay we will try it later okay we will see all of this in action when we begin uh, working with our lab uh, the last thing i need to discuss here we need to uh, do a little bit of testing so let me show you all the four ai tools for example i can access chat gbt okay from a website called poe.com uh, okay i can't access it from uh, the the official website of OpenAI because it is uh, forbi forbidden in Egypt. Here we have ChatGPT and some AI tools. Claude, we will use these ones, and you can ask him questions. I will begin to ask him some questions to uh, to tell him to introduce his himself, ChatGPT and Ping AI and Brad. So let's open again. Here is Brad and. Uh, as for Ping AI, if you have uh, uh, Edge browser installed, here is the uh, Ping AI. Okay, so you can go here, for example, tell him to introduce yourself in simple terms. Okay, then we can here introduce, okay, and tell him yourself in simple terms so i am chat gbt i am a language model created by OpenAI. i was designed to assist and communicate people through written text using natural language processing and machine learning algorithm we can tell him to uh, 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 explain to a five-year-old, okay, and then let's see if we can get a more simple uh, answer, okay, I'm a computer program that can understand and talk to people using words, just like how you talk to your mom or your dad and ask him questions, so this is very uh, simple one, and actually we can understand this one, uh, wait, wait, wait for a moment guys, I will come back, so let's continue guys here we can see that it gives me a simple explanation uh, for introducing himself for a five-year-old uh, boy he said that i am a computer program that can understand and talk to people using words just like how you talk to your mom and dad and ask him ask them questions you can talk to me and ask questions too but instead of talking out loud like we do we talk by typing on a computer or on a phone okay i can help you with things like answering questions telling you stories or chatting with you it's like having a friend that you can talk to anytime. Okay, let's go to Brad and tell him to introduce yourself in simple terms. Let's see the response or the output. So, sure, my name is Brad. I'm a large language model known as Controversial AI or chatbot trained to be informative and comprehensive. I trained on massive amount of data, blah, 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 able to communicate, generate human-like text in response to a wide variety of, of prompts and questions. Uh, this is maybe a little bit of, uh, we need to make it more simple. So, uh, let's tell him to explain to a five year 
old. Okay, I am Brad, I'm a big computer that can read and write like a person. I can answer your questions, write stories, and help you with your homework. I'm still learning, but I'm always uh, working to get better. Okay, so this is, you can see communicate, okay, response why the prompts, uh, I'm still under development, I have to learn, perform many kinds of tasks, including uh, try to follow your instructions and complete your request. I use my knowledge to answer questions, generate different creative text formats okay here is another uh, thing with uh, I think here no it doesn't give me a couple of answers here you can see something called view other drafts here you can see uh, three uh, outputs you can choose from them uh, choose from them okay and they are different so you generate three prompts here in chat GBT give you only one answer here can give you three answers and can you choose the best of them okay so this is introduction to brad and chat gbt let's see here about uh, uh ping ai introduce okay your self in simple terms So this is Ping. I am a chat mode of Microsoft Ping search. I can help you with finding information, generating contacts, and having fun conversations. Okay, so uh, I think here is are you chat chat GBT dash four. No, I am not ChatGPT. I am Ping, a chat model Microsoft search. I'm a different, use a different model to communicate with you. Okay, so this is something uh, very good. Let's go to Claude. Okay, here, this is another chat. Let's seem to introduce yourself. And then we will go to experiment to tell each one of these uh, AI is to compare himself to the other AI and you'll see amazing results actually and most of them are not correct and are biased everyone says that he is the best let's uh, let's see here introduce yourself in simple terms my name is Claude I'm an AI assistant created by Orthopic okay uh, explain that to a five year old. Okay, I'm a, my name is Claude. I'm a special robot that lives inside computers, okay, and phones. I made a very smart people who work at a company called Trophic. My job is to help answer people questions. I don't have a body like real robots. I'm just have a voice that comes from speakers or headphones. I use information from the internet and things I have learned to try to get. To give helpful answers even though i am a robot i don't actually feel things like people do i just try my best to follow instructions i was made with does this make sense how's that i've tried to use simple language and analogies to explain my basic nature and purpose to a young child please let me know if you like me to clarify or expand everything so he's saying that i am a special robot that live inside computers he is not a computer or computer program. He's saying that I am a special robot. Maybe this is more creative. Okay, and can I answer questions? So this is good. Uh, we need to answer a question. Okay, we need to ask them, each one of them, a question. Are you connected to the internet? Because Chad GBT is not connected to the internet. Let's see here. Are you connected in real time? Because this is very important. Real time to the internet because some of them get the data from the internet but not in real time he is fed up with the data and then the internet connection is cut off okay uh, let's see if this uh, will be answered uh, momentarily ok 
okay he's saying that he is working or he's saying here that he is connected in real time so I use machine modules and infra I created to look up information provide I am designed to work both online and offline when offline I have still access to my local module so he can work online and offline let's go to chat GBT and tell him the same question are you connected to the internet Okay, but let's see first why he is doing all of these things okay so because here are you connected to the internet let's see here okay this is not correct okay because he is not connected to the internet this is chat gpt3 for this is the first uh, incorrect answer i am a i am connected to the internet in real time my response are generated if you ask him who won the World Cup 2022. Okay, he say this Viva it is in Qatar. Okay, but it is already it's not future. It's already done. So we can see here that he is lying. Okay, he's only uh, uh, he's only having uh, events until 2021. As I said before, just a minute, guys. So let's continue guys here we can see that he's clearly lying and he's not connected to the internet so this is another thing not to uh, trust the ai 100 percent so let's see if we also uh, brad can answer actually brad is the most uh, he for sure is connected to the internet in real time because this is google okay this means i can access process formation for internet and this is one of its main advantages okay uh, he and ping ai or it and ping ai Okay, so he he can answer how is the weather today. If you do this on ChatGPT, the old one, it will not answer. I think even ChatGPT4 can't answer. Okay, so let's tell him, are you connected to the internet? Okay, is chat GBT? Four connected to the internet. So, chat GPT 3.5 on that I'm using in www.poe.com, uh, it is not connected to the internet. This is 3.5, chat GPT 3.5. As for chat GPT 4, latest one, let's see if it is connected to the internet. I think it is. So, based ChatGPT2 is a language model optimized. Uh, it's not clear it's connected to the internet, but it's available in ChatGPT Plus and has an AI for developers. So, this is not a clear answer. So, anyway, we will do the last thing in our video here to make their or each one compare itself to the other one. So, let's go to Cloud and tell him compare yourself to chat gbt and uh, ping ai and google bread and put the comparison you will see that everyone will favor itself favor uh, itself against the other uh, AIs comparison in a table okay so here we are uh, telling him to use a certain format this is one of the things that we'll discuss in the cheat sheet that uh, Perry have uh, uh, made okay to uh, tell him to put your answer in a certain format okay so here we can see let's see if he will compare himself okay here is not putting uh, in a table okay because it's very very short okay but this is one of the thing also for cloud i think it's not uh, have not this is not an advantage because i tell him to put in a table okay the comparison assistant chat gbt uh, ping ai google created assistant chat gbt ping ai here's a comparison created by us okay he didn't put a table okay 
uh, okay let's see here we're saying that assistant chat gpt ping ai google created by anaphoric microsoft google runs locally or in the cloud okay this is not a clear answer it's uh, i need him to tell him arrange in a table or compile in a table in a table okay here you can see that uh, this is more clear okay here we can see that created by the company Athrophic OpenAI Microsoft Google runs locally or on the cloud locally on the cloud on the cloud only there is a version of it that can run locally locally or on the cloud uh, this is also one thing it's on the cloud only uh, locally on the cloud this is also something I'm not clear of it's clear until now it is on the cloud so this is not an accurate information ability to clarify expand uh, robust ability limited ability robust ability limited ability this is not correct uh, he is favoring himself or he is saying that he is uh, limited okay but chat GPT is further more advanced than him so this is also not clear or it's not correct focus narrow questions generalistic uh, narrow search narrow search all of these are not correct it's not narrow search uh, data privacy preserves user data uses user data for training uses data. okay this is clear this is a closed system or it says that it preserves user data privacy but the others not this is not also uh, an accurate information you don't know okay so this is not an an an, an accurate uh, fact okay or it is this not a fact strengths provide direct co concise answers generate long form text provide quickly search results provide okay this is not also clear it's, this is general uh, general words okay, it's not clear actually limitations uh, limited knowledge breeds uh, limited to ability to clarify limited information limited information. let's see uh, the summary uh, is a large module focused on more text generation while I focus on more targeted questions. Ping AI and Google aim to provide quick results and information while I provide more explained as he is favoring himself against the other ones. I am designed to run locally or in the cloud to protect user privacy while the others use data for model training. So it's saying here that there is some privacy issues with the, pri the user data. Okay. ChatGPT has more than knowledge but set limited ability to clarify while I have more focus scope but can expand on answers so he is favoring himself to other uh, things let's go and ask the same question to uh, chat GBT and other uh, and other AI everyone will favor himself against the other ones that actually chat GBT didn't recognize that Google Brad is working okay it's still not existing okay just wait a moment so let's continue guys here we will ask the same question to chat gpt 3.5 uh i can say here that google bird it's not google bird it's google bread okay so this is a uh, stately clear or this uh, say to us that he doesn't recognize google bread he's saying bread okay so he doesn't know it's existent because he's not connected to the internet okay we can see that this comparison actually also it is in favor of uh, chat gbt 3.5 let's see here that training data uh, large data diverse of human language large data of web pages and web queries actually he doesn't know also ping ai okay because he only recognizes ping okay a uh, large data set of web pages but he's bird okay because it's google he is here uh, so he is uh, predicting okay he, he doesn't have an accurate information because he got it bird he got it wrong okay uh, the module okay uh, strong NLP uh, strong LMP strong LMP okay I don't know what the LMP but natural language processing can provide the range of tasks uh, answering questions summarizing so on so primarily focus on answering questions this is I think for a uh, ping and this is for uh, Brad, but what about? Uh, oh, I didn't. Uh, I forgot to add. Uh, uh, to add. Uh, compare yourself to Chat Ping, Google Brad, and uh, sorry, I need to and Claude. Okay. AI. 
AI. Okay, I think I need to uh, or need to adjust this a little bit because the answer is not correct. Okay, let's uh, okay, let's get off something like this. Uh, just a moment, we will uh, adjust the uh, the outcome again. Compare yourself to Ping, Google Brad, and Claude AI. Okay, this is it, Claude. Okay, and let's see the comparison. Okay, still he is insisting on BERT, okay, it is not it. And here he recognized that he is chat GPT-3, not chat GPT-4. Okay, and still uh, he is giving some answers, but I assure you he is still uh, focusing on, or he is putting himself in higher rank than the other uh, the other uh, AIs, okay? But he's saying here something that it's important to know that each of these AIs has its strengths and weakness, which one of the best is particular case will depend on the specific needs of the user. Anyway, this is more, uh, actually the information of it is not accurate, okay? Some of this information is not accurate. As actually even Google BERT, it's not Google BERT, it's Google Brat, and I tell him there is no, it is. Google Bard, not Bert. So again, uh, he is not uh, comparing it in, uh, I don't trust this information. If we tell him, please include uh, resource information links include your resource information links because here we will see that he is not giving accurate answer not that so it, giving a completely different answer than the one that I asked it. Okay, this is not correct. I am saying include with the table your resource information links. So here we need to know where he's getting his information from, okay? I think he will, he's not getting it from an accurate uh, source or these sources are old. So all of this data is not, uh, I am suspecting this data, okay? Because some of these data are after 2022, okay? If you can see here, this is the resources. Okay, we can clarify them and see them, but actually I am a little bit suspicious about the data he is providing. Anyway, so we can see here clearly that sometimes ChatGPT give wrong information. Let's see here if we go to Brad and tell him to compare yourself to ChatGPT, Ping, uh, and Claude. Okay, and let's see what will be the result. Okay, Claude, uh, A U D. Okay, Claude AI. Okay. And let's see what will be the info. So let's wait for a moment, I will come back again. So let's see guys, here he's saying that developer, okay, all of these are correct. Replica, this is not correct, I think he is, this is not the company because it was answered with a different answer. Books articles, books articles, uh, okay, uh, answering questions, answering questions, I think 
they have the same uh, let's see here is favoring himself comprehensive human like fact check emotional support okay here can be inaccurate based can be repetitive let's see here okay so he's saying can be inaccurate can be slow can be inaccurate or bias and can be dry i think this is talking about uh, ping is uh, relevant or his rival c can be repetitive and realistic all good a good all-around chatbot best for users who need okay, a good chatbot for users who want human-like conversations this is for chat GPT. a good chat for users who need fact answered questions okay uh, ping ai cloud okay uh, a good for need emotional support is important to not only that under development their capabilities are constantly improving uh, this is a different answer i have uh, this is a different answer from the one i have uh, got before the the recording it was completely uh, favoring each one was completely favoring himself against other uh, ais anyway we will do this last question to uh, uh, to let's see to uh, uh, to ping AI let's see compare yourself to cloud AI AI and ping and cloud yourself to cloud AI and let's see here chat GBT chat GBT Okay, and Google Board and put the comparison in a table. Let's see what he will answer. So he's searching for each one of them. I think Google here, sorry, uh, ping appears to be like it is a, a search engine, not an AI. Okay, it appears for me like this. It doesn't seem to be an ai okay and he's searching for articles he's not generating answers i think he is limited in this he is he work he can generate answers uh, but it i think it is limited he mostly getting data from the internet okay so it's something like i'm talking to a search uh, instead a search engine instead of uh, instead of typing okay i think he is getting a table also uh, and he is comparing he is say here there is some of them are with money i don't know this fact actually uh, let's see what which one he is talking about the money here i think here he is talking about uh talking about cloud cloud uh i think maybe talking is the paid version of cloud okay as for chat gpt it is free and there is 20 as yes, there is a plus okay, account google broad uh, free Okay, English only. This is correct. Uh, as for Claude, I don't know it's English only or Arabic. No, it was working with Arabic before with me. As for uh, Ping, it is free and working with other languages. Uh, he's saying unknown coding skills. Okay, unknown conversation. Uh, anyway, uh, so this is a comparison actually, and it is not in a clear format, but. We can see here that most of them in this recording are giving uh, balanced answers. Uh, when I was uh, trying to get an answer from them, it was uh, not balanced. Each one is uh, referring himself or is preferring himself to other uh, AIs. Hope this video is informative for you all. Until the next video, we will begin working with uh, creating the virtual machines automatically using Packer. Uh, uh, packer solution and other things hope this video will form to you all and thank you all for view thank you so much